get down and dirty. It is. It is a deal. Don't tell anyone that I said that. What's up? If you don't already know, my name is Becca. And we're going through some big stuff. We've been really patient and we've been working really hard and I see our efforts coming to fruition, causing fruition. We are getting our fruit. We're receiving our fruit now. And our fruit is good opportunity, buying a house, being financially stable and independent, starting a family. So yeah, we have a lot to talk about. I'm not gonna talk about all of the things today, mostly just the home buying process because we have, we've done everything. We have not closed yet. That is the next step, but that's like the last step. So the lender, the realtor, the sellers don't need anything else from us. We've taken care of everything. It's been stressful, it's been hard. I have had two nights that I just, um, Beck Beck was feeling a little depressed press. God, that was awful. I am not gonna say that again. I'm so sorry. It's been real and it's been hard and it has also been real hard, okay? But worth it. I think it's all gonna be worth it. And that's what I wanna talk to you about today. Give you an update where we are at and what we have gone through so far to get here. I have a couple things to do. So we're just gonna chat, fold some laundry, maybe pack a little, I don't know, but I am gonna show you how many boxes I have packed already. Ah! And some stuff we've learned along the way. Hopefully I can give a few tips, but no tricks. I don't have any tricks for this. It's a long, painful process. Anyway, let's get into it. Look what I found in the laundry basket. First things first, we have laundry to put away before we fold more, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take it all the way back to June of 2023, where I, where we begin our story, really. And we were really hopeful that we would be able to buy last year. I told the story many times, it did not work out. We got credit cards, we started uh, saving up each month. We're finally ready now, but that was a hard trying time, okay? It's a big deal, because it was like heartbreaking every single step of the way whenever we try to do this before. But now, timing is nearly perfect. It's really good. And I really think that all the blocks are fitting together. Everything is falling into place and I feel good about it. I still have anxiety that it's not gonna work out, something's gonna fall through, but I really don't think it's going to. Logically, I, I know that it, that it isn't going to. We've done everything right. So I think we're golden. It's just one of those things, until we have the key in our hands, I am gonna be overly cautious. Really the only piece of advice that I have, look out for people that want to lie to you. I would say specifically lenders, which kind of sucks because it's a lot of money and they have control over the process. It blows having to put all your trust into someone like that. One thing that we learned after we quit trying to buy a house last year and then started again this year was that the person that we were working with last year just lied to us about a couple things, which was gonna be like 10,000 more up front. What she was trying to get us to do was to buy down our interest rate. And that shit adds up. It doesn't sound that bad, 1% of the loan per 0.25%, but um, it is, it is a big deal. I would say to do your own research, to kind of make sure that you know what you're talking about. You know, it's like whenever you don't know anything about cars and you go to the car place and they see that you're young and a girl and are like, you need all of this shit or your car's gonna break down, you're gonna die. It does cost $2,000 though, but you have to have it. And you're like, oh my God, I'm so glad that they told me that because I wouldn't have known and I would have broken down and died. But then you talk to somebody else that you know personally and they're like, oh my God, you don't need any of that. They just, they got you. Don't let them get you. Do your own research. I know that it's really difficult to understand the language of lenders and honestly realtors and how the housing market works. I don't know how the housing market works, but I do know that you are not forced to buy down your interest rate. I'm gonna hang these up and then we're gonna go somewhere else. It's 
Smell spot. Excuse me. Scoot over. Scooch booch. <laughs> oh my gosh. Lay down. Lay down. Lay down. I do love you. Thank you, buddy. Lay down. Oh, I actually remember one more tip that I wanted to tell you. Zillow and Realtor.com, but I think Zillow is more popular. Their little monthly calculator estimator thing on how much you will pay monthly for a mortgage on a particular home. Not accurate, okay? Throw it out. Don't, do not get your hopes up based on that. Like me because it's not what, what you want it to be. So unless you know all of the information that you can put in the boxes yourself, it's not gonna be accurate. Interest rate, down payment, I don't know. You know how much your home insurance is gonna be, stuff like that, especially the interest rate. They give you a real nice one on Zillow, but they know nothing about you, do they? So our interest rate is like 7.01. Yeah, it's bad, it's bad. Uh, but, but, but I mean, what are, you, what are we gonna do? What is she gonna do? You know, I don't know. As far as how we did it this time, we spoke to a realtor first. I researched realtors at the beginning of December because I knew that we wanted to start looking in January and close in February or March. Found a website that had multiple realtors in this company and that was based in the city that we wanted to move to. I felt better about going with the man. I don't know why. Actually, I do. He had a couple Instagram reels that were just funny and like corny. And also I saw a review of his that said he's not afraid to get down on his hands and knees if there's something that you want looked at closely in the house. Apart from being a good realtor, he's just a really nice guy. And I was like, that's what we want on our team. Willing to get down and dirty, uh, realty style. And I liked that one of the reviews said he's just a really nice person. I want that but also whenever we spoke to him whenever i talked to him the first time it was just really obvious that he was kind of a hustler you know he will get it done he makes things happen obviously this is how he gets paid also he also recommended our lender to us so that made that part easy we didn't have to find anybody you can shop around for mortgages we did not because we'd had that bad experience with the first one that we contacted at the beginning of 2023 and then we spoke to these guys and they were knowledgeable and also like kind of care about your finances overall which i think is because they are also a financial advice company or something i'm trying to say they want their mortgage clients to come back to them to get their finances looked at and pay them to help them with their finances. So we're not gonna do that, but it does cause them to be more in your best interest whenever they're giving you a loan. He talked to us about life insurance and disability insurance and retirement plans and a lot of stuff. Um, it was definitely more information than just, I can get you this loan, uh, you should do it. More of like a financial consultation, which, it's cool. So Cody, our realtor, took care of finding our lender, Brad. He also helped us find a house, of course. I mean, that's his whole job. So our budget was on the lower end of nice, I guess you could say, for the area that we're in. But we wanted a three bed, two bath at least, had to have a backyard with a fence, or it had to be enough under budget that we could put a fence in ourselves and pay to have that done prior to moving in because we have dogs. We're not gonna take them on a leash. You should see, the, actually you should not see them on a leash because you think that we were the worst. Lucy. <laughs> okay. Okay. She just nudged that thing. Oh, and then was standing there like, <laughs> okay, we, yeah, so that, we needed at least three bed, two bath. I don't know where I was in this story. Oh, I was talking about the dogs on a leash. Yeah, they're really bad at being on a leash. We're not gonna do that for every single time that they need to use the lavatory. We contacted him at the beginning of December and I hadn't seen a three bed, two bath house in this town for our, in our price range for like two months. They just, they were gone and nobody was really putting their house on the market. It was just kind of like slim pickings. So I was really happy whenever Cody called me and said that he had found a house that was really nice that he thought might work for us on the higher end of our price range, but we might be able to get them to go down more and said, I want to go and check it out first to make sure that it's as nice as the pictures look. And if you watched, I think, the video where I was cleaning out the liquor cabinet and talking about nothing for like 15 minutes. If you did watch that video, you probably heard me say 
that he had called and said that, that he was gonna check it out first. And I was like, that is so nice. And then he called me and he said, um, it looks great. They've taken really good care of the house. There's only been two owners and they're willing to go down $5,000. And they offered that right off the bat whenever I walked in, whenever I asked if there was any wiggle room. Hopefully we can get them to come down even more. So we did the walkthrough, really liked it, actually met the sellers. In the end, they were not willing to go down another 5,000 because they are selling their house to buy a plot of land and build one. They don't have really any savings, so they're using what they get out of selling their house to put towards this endeavor. So they kind of always knew that they were gonna have to accept no less than what they had mm -hmm. first offered. It would be it would be nicer if they went down another five thousand. You know what I'm saying? We said okay, that's fine. We can't afford it. It's for sale by owner, which I had not really been looking at. I don't want to deal with strangers who don't know what they're doing. Whenever I don't know what I'm doing, so I guess that that was my my mindset. But whenever you have a realtor, he like he does everything so they do not have a realtor cody's taking care of all of that with them but i think that there has been some pushback on some of the things that we have asked for because they don't have an agent if that makes sense so i think that especially with the repairs whenever we asked to have some things done they had said well it never gave us a problem and obviously obviously it didn't <laughs> give you a problem or it wouldn't still be like this but they actually did agree to three out of the four things that we asked them to do and that was great closing date i had originally thought was the 15th like i thought that that was decided unless something weird happened or big came up but i thought that like okay december 15th is our day but no that's not how that works apparently so there's like a window of 10 days in the contract that we signed and that the seller signed we can set a, a firm closing date this week i hope i hope this week another kind of big deal. February 7th, which is in nine days, I get my IUD removed. So maybe we got a baby coming soon, hopefully. So that's another thing that's really exciting that I try to think about whenever I get bummed out about house stuff is baby stuff. So yeah, we're super excited. Like super, super excited. Oh, and by the way, we there still haven't been homes with our must-haves in our price range. Our must-haves are literally three bed, two bath with a yard. That's it. And they there haven't been any posted. So I'm so happy that we went ahead and put down an offer that was accepted on this one. Instead of being like, no, I don't like it. I want to wait and see if something better comes along. Because, I mean, we could have closed in March and just waited. Because we went and saw this place January 6th, I think. Hmm. Yeah, weird date. It was still considered early in our journey to buying a house, you know? But then you realize how long it freaking takes to close anyway. And um, yeah, I mean, it seemed like it was right on, right on track for when we should have been putting an offer in. Oh my gosh, you guys have those clothes that hairs just, I don't know. I don't, I don't, let me see. Let's see what fabric this is. 91% recycled polyester, 9% spandex. Don't do it. hairs it's my hair it gets like woven in and i hate it okay let me finish this really quick and then i am going to show you the boxes i have packed i'm so it's so exciting to me to see packed boxes i just want to pack more and more and more and more and more and more but i don't want to pack too soon and then accidentally i don't know throw something away that not throw something away but pack something up that we need before we move um, oh, somebody did buy the embroidery machine. So that was a nice addition to our wallet. I have a couple other things. Nobody wants the fucking Christmas tree. I should have thought about this. The fact that trying to sell it right after Christmas is stupid. If nobody buys it, I mean, I'll eventually just post it for free. But if nobody wants it, then I'll just donate it to Goodwill. <sighs> just go to my office and look at my little stack of boxes. Okay, it's a little chaotic in here still but i promise it's like it's not dirty okay it's just chaotic and uh full much like me i'm sorry i said that i don't know just forget about it um so these are my three boxes as you can see this has our christmas decorations in it this has tupperware and miscellaneous utensils okay have a great one love ya I just, I hope you have a good life, okay? All right.
I would say that it is future Becca, but honestly, I just now got done with the last clip that you saw, watched it, and realized that my head's cut off. So I thought about trying to do something funny with it in um, editing, but being headless isn't funny. So I am just filming this to say I recognize it. I see it too. Yes, it's annoying. I'm not going to refilm it though because it makes it not authentic, you know? So hope you enjoyed regardless. It really was a short amount of time that I was headless anyway. So if it bothered you that much, um, okay, fair, fair. I'm going to go though. And all that stuff I said about have a good life and I love you and like all that stuff. Um, don't tell anyone that I said that. It will ruin my reputation and um, has the potential to destroy my family. Destroy my family. Bye.